Hi, everybody. Welcome back to another Second Breakfast podcast. I'm Andy Roth alongside Phil Duvall. Say hi, Phil. Hey, everybody. How are you today on this week of... Uh, never mind. I'm over it already. I'm over it. You're over it? Uh, the week has barely I, started. I know. I love... I just love... Like, there's... Okay. So there's these people in this world who they say exactly the opposite of what they mean. Example. If someone says, I'm just not that into drama, I just don't want any drama in my life. Those are the people that cause the most drama oh. in the world. Well, that's clearly true. If a person insists that they are classy, specifically a woman, if a woman's because a man would never say it, it's just not something a guy would say. If a woman <laughs> insists that she's classy, she is not classy. It's true. And if someone just says, I'm over it, it's like one of those things that they, first of all, you're not. Right, right. You're not over. I'm just so over it. No, not. I knew a girl. This is one of my favorite things ever. When I waited tables in North Carolina, I knew a girl who'd say, that guy's about to get on my last nerve. I just love that. About to get on my last nerve. Not you're on my last nerve or blah, blah, blah. He's about to get on my last nerve. Nice. And I was like, I love the South. Anyways, so uh, (laughs) I I started the episode with with a pointless cliche. Um, nice. It, well, uh, gosh. Second Breakfast Nation and I thank you. It, it, that's it. We did. That's all we got. <laughs> <laughs> and we're done. All right. Thanks, folks. Tune in on Friday. Uh, uh, let's talk about what uh, what we saw this week. Yeah. Uh, so it was a light week for me. Uh, and as as we've as we've mentioned, uh, thank God. Uh, I'm I'm actually starting to have a bit a, a bit of a of a. Of a lift, a lift, I think it's called. A, right, it's a li- lie, eye. Li- it's a, it's li- a long eye. A li- long eye. Oh, right. Like, like vowel, consonant, e. Right. I. Right. I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm not a fan of this. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. You don't. I'm not you don't a fan of you having a life. I, I get that you need one. Sure. But you getting a life is going to very quickly prove how little of a life I actually have. One. Sure. <laughs> and two, I, I like. You're gonna stop be available for me exactly when I need you at all times, every moment, and that's really frustrating for just, me. Just pick up the red phone, and I'll and I'll be on the okay. other end. So here's the deal: that, that even one. even in an off week for me, in okay. in a week where I am quote unquote getting a life, I still watched more movies than most people watch in a month. It's true. I watched three movies this week. Okay. Okay. Uh. The uh, the the only new movie I watched, uh, and the only movie in theaters was Riddick, the new the new uh, Vin Diesel sure. movie. Sure. Uh, really quite good, uh, especially yeah. especially the first part. It was really interesting, and and I mean it's not an Academy Award winning performance, but it it requires him to be charismatic on screen. And you know what Vin Diesel can do? He can do that. You know. Yes. Um, I'm already yawning with you saying it. No, I'm kidding. I, I, I have no... So Vin Diesel gets, like, so much hate towards him. And I'm just like, it's completely unfounded. Yes. Like, yes. he doesn't go around trying to act like he's anything other than who he is. At and, least as far as I know. As far right. as I know. And he's surprisingly thoughtful. He, he like, he writes... He, he's, he's a screenwriter as well. He, like, he's just cool. And also, he is the voice of the Iron Giant. Is he really? Yes. You know what, everybody? Back off. Exactly. Just back exactly. Off. I actually think it's a it's a little bit of racism. Um, I'm only I'm only probably twenty percent kidding. I'm about eighty okay. percent serious. Okay. It's a little bit racism. Okay. And it's uh and it's a little bit like and people get I mean look, people get uncomfortable with other people who are like if someone is more advanced than you at something. People get really uncomfortable with it. Like sure. he's macho, he's muscular, and so people go, "Oh, he's a meathead." Then, yeah. And it's like, if he was going around saying awful things about women and like being just a like a like a gross misogynist or like whatever yep. bigot, but he's not. He's just some guy who's really buff and makes action movies. What is our issue here? You're right. I, I don't get. I, you know, I don't get it. I nor I nor I. Also, I, I, although I won't see this movie probably, Batista's in it, who was one of my favorite wrestlers. Speaking of big muscular people, he is he is actually very good and good um, to hear. I love hearing that. And he's in he's in that Marvel Marvel movie coming out next year. He's in Guardians of the Galaxy. 
So, so he definitely has a screen presence, and I'm I'm excited yeah. for that. He's a he was he was one of he's not the greatest wrestler in the world, but he was one of my favorite wrestling personalities. Nice. He's really magnetic, and uh, that I, certainly comes across. That certainly I comes believe across. That. I believe that. Um, also, uh, Katie Sackhoff, who I know as as uh, Starbuck in the the revamping of Battlestar Galactica, she's just fantastic. She may or may not go topless for a moment. Uh, that's okay. Tough. That's not why it's wonderful, but it. I mean, but it's not why it's not wonderful. There either. you go. There you go. She's just. <laughs> she's just awesome. Let's see if I can read your mind here on this one. She's just. She like. She has some of the worst dialogue ever written for a human being, uh, and that seems to happen to her a lot. And it makes me curious about her. Sure, she sells ninety five percent of it though. Okay. You know, which is which is a decent ratio. True. Yes. Yes. Totes. Totes. Uh, Magoats. Nice. Uh, no. I saw a like grade Z budget documentary. Uh, on 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 recommendations from some friends who are just wonderful and I mean they'd be wonderful anyway, but they're certainly wonderful for recommending this to me. The documentary is called "A Lawyer Walks Into a Bar." Okay, what kind of? First of all, great title, right? It is it is about six people who I, I don't remember if it's the summer two thousand six or summer two thousand seven taking the California bar exam. Wow! And as much as a as as much as a ninety minute anything can give you the feeling of weeks of a of horrifying life changing pressure, right? It does it. It is. It is. There were. There, I had trouble getting to sleep when I was done. It. It was the little That's bit great. of flashback action happening. I love it. It was. That's it great. Was, it was extremely. That's. And when I say great, I mean so glad that I don't know that feeling and don't want to watch a movie about that ever. I don't. I don't. I mean, it wouldn't bother me as much because I didn't go through it. Right. No. But, that's absolutely true. That's absolutely true. But I can't. You know. But for the reason you just said, I'm not sure I can recommend it. Sure. But I would absolutely recommend it for anyone thinking about going to law school. Nice. Just throwing that out there. Um, and the third movie I watched this week. For are you ready for this? No, Tell I'll me. save it. I'll save it for my one big thing. I'll save it for my one big thing. But the movie that I watched this week, the third movie, Uncle Buck. Oh, love it! I miss John love Candy. It. I, yeah. I just, I just miss John Candy. You, I remember you posting something about that on Facebook, and yeah. I was jealous that it was you and not me. <laughs> Although I <I'd laughs> watched Uncle Buck like a month ago on on the TV because it's been on a lot lately. Um, do you get the feeling that's too long? Like it's been too long since you've seen it? I just, I, I mean, I remember I went, you know, you've got me reading. It's so funny. You, you really, you've gotten me paying attention to Roger Ebert. Um, you, and you've gotten me paying attention to Wesley Morris, neither of whom I agree with, which frustrates me because I read them. Sure. And then I'm like, what do they think? And then I don't agree with them. So then why do I keep it? If I had a friend who every time I asked him for advice, he gave me bad advice, but he sounded really thoughtful. I didn't, I would, I eventually stopped going to that person. Sure. That's sort of how I feel. So, but, but I, I, there are things about them that I appreciate. One of the things I appreciate about Ebert is just how accessible his reviews are. Yeah. And that he does a lot of them. And sure. I, and I almost feel like that's, that's kind of the problem with a lot of movie reviewers is they're, they're actually, they haven't thought about how to be accessible, but he didn't care for uncle buck. Mm -hmm. And I just remember like, maybe it's cause I grew up on it. Maybe it's because I remember riding my bicycle to the movie theater with my friend and seeing it. I, I, maybe. Can, I mean, it could be. Can, can, but it's so I, great. I want to respond to that, Phil. Can we save that for one big thing? Because I have something that I like. Yes. You know? Granted. Yeah. So a lawyer walks into Thank a you, bar. Sir. Riddick. Uncle, Uncle Buck. Buck. You got a fourth movie. <gasps> oh, that's right. That's right. Oh, our Project Melway movie. Yeah. Our Project Melway movie. That's it. Get the gringo. Get the gringo. Gringo. Yes. Like, I, like me. I am I like am excited. <laughs> yes. Not like you. If you were in a movie, they'd call it Get the Get the Hebrew. It'd be a very different movie. Really? Really? I don't know. You have to go there? I what? love going there. It's one of my favorite <laughs> places to go. I wish I could be a Jew. I think we've what's, been over this. What's the what's the give me a synonym for get that rhymes with Jew or Hebrew? Uh, it rhymes with it. Well, get the gringo doesn't rhyme. I know, but but it but it's or or but or is alliterative. 
accrue the that. Hebrew or accrue something? The, accrue, accrue the Hebrew. Yeah. That's terrible sounding, but I think it's hilarious. I'm glad you like it. Well, you have to be very careful anytime you say anything about this because if you try to come up with a title that's like get, it could be a word that might also be in, implied as like harm in some way. And, and then it, it's immediately anti-Semitic. And that is not my goal. And it is clearly not my goal either. It, well, it might be your goal a little bit. Let's I, I am <clears throat> I am a little bit Ryan Gosling and True Believer. Where <laughs> I, I, I yeah. am, I'm a little bit that guy. I've never thought of you as a self-loathing Jew. I, I'm not. <laughs> no, I've actually never thought of you as self-loathing either as a Jew or just as a person who self-loathes. Sure, right, right. No, Sometimes no. I'm a self-loathing Gentile, you know. Sure, yes, um, right. Other times I'm just a, 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 I'm like an egotistical Gentile. I'm a, I'm a mess of contradictions, let's be honest. <laughs> okay. Uh, my movies? Is it time? First of all, oh, Uncle Buck. I can't wait to talk about it. I hope you want to say something about it in my one big thing. I do. We can talk about John Candy for a year and a half. I know, right? I am I am amazed by how John Candy, how the great comic actors of our upbringing have actually raised in my esteem as actors. And specifically, I'm thinking of John Candy, Steve Martin, and Bill Murray. Bill yes. Murray has recently taken on some weird mantle among hipsters, they wear his face on their T-shirts and stuff, and it's <laughs> like very Shay. I've never su- seen it. Yes, that well, is so weird. I live in Southern California. Okay, fair it is. Enough. It is very. It is very weird. It's also weird because it's someone like just in the past year, you and I were talking, and I was like, I think Bill Murray might be my favorite actor right now, or at least top three or four. Okay, and so I don't like when my tastes line up with like weird trends it makes me feel which is going to be one of my big things it makes me feel i guess like (laughs) it's not even the whole i liked it before it was cool that's not the point it's like it's like i just liked this guy he's bill murray we grew up with him are we really putting him on t-shirts now is that a thing we do as people right just seems so impersonal i don't know i'm lame okay here's my movies (laughs) um i started the week off with the pt anderson film the master Ah, did you find it completely inscrutable? <laughs> here's the deal. Yeah, here's the deal. First of all, it took me three times to watch it, of watching it to watch it. I know, I know. But that wasn't actually because I wasn't, like, it was actually because things were happening, not because I didn't want to watch it. Sure. Or because I was bored. Yes. Like, the first half hour, 45 minutes of that movie is, mm, like, it's like hypnotic. Yes. yes. First of all, Visually, this is one of the most arresting films I've seen in a while, yep. where nothing really happens. Yes, but it's so gorgeous. He used he used thirty five or he used seventy millimeter film, yep. and it's like you can chew on the scenery. It's just delicious. The performances are, I believe, the French say "la maze balls." <laughs> um, it's it's ama- it's amazing. Uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman, Joaquin Phoenix. I had heard amazing things about Amy Adams' performance. I wasn't. I was fine. She she was fine. She's great. She's Amy Adams. But I actually didn't feel like the part. I actually didn't feel like Anderson gave her enough for me to say that it was an amazing performance. I actually agree with that. I was I was underwhelmed by her, but not because of her. I am physically incapable of being underwhelmed by Amy Adams. Oh, but I was yes, under. I, but I was underwhelmed by the amount of time her character was given. They clearly did On things with notes. her that made yes. you realize she was super important. Yeah. But the here's the problem with the movie. What is she important to because the movie has no plot or arc? It's, tr- it's true. And that's problematic. It's now, here's true. the deal. I am not the smartest. I'm not the smartest person in the world. I am not the sharpest knife in the drawer. I mean, you're but, in the top, like, six or seven, though. But probably. I'm doing okay. Right. I'm like, right. So, and I've seen a lot of movies. <laughs> so when I watch a movie and it ends... And my first thing I say when I look over at my wife and another friend of mine who's also very smart, and I go, what? (laughs) Yeah. And then they look at me and they go, we don't know. We thought you were going to tell us. That is problematic for me. Yeah. Yep. Um, That's not a – it is a criticism. It's not a big (laughs) criticism because I'm willing to accept the fact that someone can make something that I don't get. I'm I'm willing to accept the fact that 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 happens. Mm -hmm. But I have have gotten to some degree or another all of Paul Thomas Anderson's movies. I don't love him the way some do. I actually think my favorite movie of his is Punch Drunk Love. Um, And I liked Boogie Nights. I didn't love it. I liked it a lot. Um, I thought Let There Be Blood was amazing and I haven't seen it since. There will be blood. 
Sure, why not? And that I, and, good. and and it was amazing, and I'm yeah. not sure, but and I would watch it again if someone wanted to. But that movie had a beginning, middle, and end. Magnolia. And Thoughts on Magnolia? When I saw it, it was my favorite movie of that year. Haven't seen it since. <laughs> I lent it to a friend of ours on DVD, the DVD. I got it on DVD, lent it to someone immediately. I'm not naming names, but his name is Aaron Epstein. And I never got it back. But I have his Tom Waits Bone Machine CD, so I'm going to call this a win. <laughs> winner, winner, chicken um, dinner. Absolutely. I've seen bits of Magnolia since. And I, so Paul Thomas Anderson's a guy that I pay attention to. If he makes a movie, I'm going to see it. Yeah. This movie has not talked me out of that. Right, right. At all. Yep. But... It was like to have two of the greatest performances I've seen in so long right next to each other, have such beautiful scenery, have some scenes that were just amazing. Yes. And then not and then when you read how he this movie was put together, you realize this was a movie that was sort of cobbled together out of Paul Thomas Anderson's sort of experimental phase. I mean yes. like there were things apparently that he used as plot points that were things that were left over from what he wanted originally to do with There Will Be Blood, for instance. Wow. Okay. Well, that's an example of like these are two completely separate ideas. Yeah. Um, apparently, some of it was st anecdotes that he had heard from the life of um, – was it Jason Robards? Yes. Yes. I, re right. I read Jason that too. Right. Jason Robards yeah. uh, and, then, and then John Steinbeck. Right. And then L. Ron Hubbard. So it's a very weird – and that's fine. None of that's actually bad. No. But, but it, it, it wouldn't be bad if it was cohesive. It, How about it, that? It speaks, it, speaks to the, it speaks to the danger of a lack of cohesiveness and coherence. And, yep. that is, and, 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 the, and the movie does not, in my mind, sidestep that. So, here, um, so if you put all those things together and it was super cohesive, you'd be like, look at that. Look at it. I mean it's like a – okay. Yes. Beck is one of, is has the potential to be a, um, a, a really great musician, and there are times when he takes all these different weird influences and then shoves them together, and you're like, "Whoa!" Yep. You just made a great pop song out of all this other stuff. Right. And there's other times where you're like, "Oh, I get it. He's experimenting." Right. I I have very similar feelings uh, to yours about about Paul Thomas Anderson. I I, I think. I might. I have to watch Boogie Nights again to 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 say for sure. I think I might switch what you feel with uh, with uh, Boogie Nights and with Punch Drunk Love, but uh, but I love okay. Punch Drunk Love. I just I just really love Boogie Nights. I was like, wow, sure. this is this is a this is a this is a story I didn't expect to be told this way, and I'm just I'm just loving it. I, right. Um, and I I do oh, I just could not get into Magnolia. Uh, okay. There will be blood. I was like, "Wow, that sure was a lot of movie just to show me Daniel Day Lewis's performance." You know, like. Oh, I was just sold on that movie. I was sold. Okay, I was. I walked. No, and I didn't know it. I mean, like, it's totally cool if you weren't. I, yeah. I literally, I walked out of the theater and said, "That is the best movie I will see this year. Mm -hmm. Nothing's going to be better than that." Mm -hmm. And it ruined my soul. Yeah. And then I walked. The next very next week, walked in and saw No Country for Old Men, and was like, "Oh, <laughs> <laughs> never, never ye mind." Right. I, Not only was it a better movie, but it crushed my soul harder. Sure. I, I just he is, he seems destined, and I like you. I will see every movie he puts out. Period. No questions asked. I. He is, and and I will give every movie of his a fair shake. Of course, I will because I do, but. He seems destined to be a, a filmmaker that I always, even the movies I don't like, I like. But it's hard for me to love his movies. Sure. Which makes they're, me... They're, you don't have a personal attachment to them. W right. But I have a personal attachment to, like, crazy stuff. No, that's my... So, no, no. I'm with like, I'm saying you there's know, something impersonal about his filmmaking. I got you. Yes. No. That, you, that's a very... That's very well said. Uh, I'm not sure by watching his movies... And I could be wrong. Maybe it's all out there for us. Maybe it's all out there for us. Right. But I'm not sure from watching his movies that I actually... And maybe it's not my job to know anything about him. But I feel like by watching his movies, I don't actually know anything about the artist. Can I, can I say this? I, I, with agreeing with everything that, you just okay. said... He and Maya Rudolph came into Balthazar all the time. Like, and 
I would assume still do. I just don't happen to work. For there. those who are listening and don't know what that means, Balthazar was a restaurant in New York that Andy used to at which Andy used to work. Yes, well, grammatically Continue. well done. Thank um, you. That was for Allison Festo. <laughs> What's up, Allison? Um, they are. It's either it's either them or Kelly Ripa and Mark Dacascos or whatever his name is for my favorite couple my, who are regulars because they were just lovely. Were they are, were they together? Yes. Oh, okay. Who? Paul Thomas Anderson and Maya Rudolph? I didn't know that. Yes, they are. They, yes. Are uh, they continue? Are they still together? Yes. Oh, okay. Because he was with Fiona Apple. Recently. He was with Fiona Apple for a while. Uh, yes. And that's um, a whole other story. I don't want to get into Fiona Apple. I'm not ready for that conversation no, with you. No, fair enough. But, um, but they were just so lovely all the time. Like, oh, okay. just, yes. And just so, like, unassuming and, and like, everything you would want from meeting someone whose work you respect. Tremendously talented people, right. Yes. Yes. Um, so, yeah. I mean, I guess I just, you know, I wish I liked his, I, I wish I loved his movies. I wish I loved his movies. And it, with the exception of Boogie Nights and probably Punch Drunk Love, I don't. Oh, but, sure. But every one I want to. Like, ugh. ugh. See, what I, I find really funny is uh, the Coen brothers, whose movies are never personal the way you think of movies being personal uh-huh. i think you get to know them so well through their movies i think you're absolutely right i think you're and they, right. they i don't know how they do it i they are oh, i was reading an interview with them earlier and uh oh and i well you know what i'll just skip to the end there's a couple other movies i've seen but i was watching i watched lady killers earlier today oh nice the lady killers which is one of their one of their least accomplished films <laughs> one of their most i don't want to say their worst because it's just not true because they don't make bad movies sure but if you had to make a list of classics, it would not be on their list. And it wouldn't be on anybody's list of their classics. It's fair. It is, it is, it is a very uneven in movie that just misses. And it's still well, it's so watchable. Yeah. And uh, uh, the music is awesome and the performances are great. Tom Hanks is just disgusting. When do you get to see Tom Hanks just play a villain? It's true. Just straight up a villain. Um, and it's great. It's so much fun. And it's got it's a, it's I, it's it's not a great movie though. It's not okay. a great movie. And it's a, a it's a it's a movie that they made that I will watch again because <laughs> um, it's them. So I'll watch it again. The the I watched a little film called The Best Exotic Marigold Hotel. Oh, nice. How was that? Okay, Andy, Andy, have you seen this movie? I have not. Andy, see this movie. <laughs> okay, I, I have, it is. First of first of all, this is a movie. Listen, okay. Dame Judy Dench, which I don't know why we have to call her Dame every time we talk about her, but fine. I I want to call I want to call her Dame Judy Dench, Grand High Poobah of everything awesome. Go ahead. Tom Wilkinson, Bill Nighy, playing the husband of the woman that he plays the husband to when in Shaun of the Dead. Penelope Walton, awesome. Penelope Walton's in it. Wilton. Um, well, I don't care. <laughs> Maggie Smith. So you got Tom Wilkinson, Judy Dench, Maggie Smith, Bill Nagy, and what's the person you just said? Penelope Walton. Oh, right. And then one other old guy I don't know the name of. I just don't know who his name. Okay. And this is one shot toward the, in the first ten minutes of the movie where they're all lined up next to each other sitting in a in a in an airport. Uh, you know, in an airport tarmac or whatever you call it, an airport, an airport uh, whatever that area is. You know, we're all waiting around. Mm-hmm. You call that area? The, the, the boarding area, like the boarding sure. area. Right, yes. And gotcha. in a line, and I'm like, these are some of the best actors in the world, and they're all just in this movie together. If this was an American movie with American actors that were all this good, it would be like, Chappin, like naming names, like right. slamming them in your face and being like, Academy Award winner, an Academy Award winner, an Academy Award nominee, an Emmy Award winner, and Clio Award winner, you know? And like, and this is just a movie where every single person is an amazing professional. And they're just like, everybody. Oh, and then just just in case you weren't sure, they put Dev Patel in it. I was, was going to say, I was gonna, and no, the no. adorable guy. He is. Yes. Andy, he's so adorable that while we were watching, I was like, He's so adorable. <laughs> and his and his girlfriend in this movie, Andy? Smoking. Okay. Andy, smoking. Look, man, you had me at Dame. Okay? So Okay, no, but I'm saying this movie in the movie in the movie what I loved about it is 
it was a movie for it was a movie about old people that wasn't like the hit you over the head like yes gotcha we're getting old oh and there's one other woman in it there's one other woman in it whose name i don't know but i you would totally recognize um it was a murderer's row it was it was just every single performance was perfect every moment was really beautiful some things you saw coming didn't care Sure. It was really cool to see legitimate romance pop up in a way that didn't feel forced um, or, or again, was just people who were attracted to each other and there was no like, you mm -hmm. know, like, it was like you could have done this movie with, with, with middle-aged people, but they chose to do it with old people. Sure. And um, I would just see this movie. I would just see this movie. It made me want to get old with my wife and then travel to somewhere exotic and then completely change everything about myself. Awesome. Um, also... Indians have completely better wardrobes than Americans. Full stop, period. Our okay. clothes are never going to be as comfortable as theirs. We need to get on board with the new world order. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> okay. See this movie, Andy. Best, best, best Exotic Marigold Hotel. Um, lovely film. Lady Killers, Best Exotic Master, and Get the Gringo, which we're going to talk about in just... A few minutes. Indeed. That's my list. Four. We both saw four this week. Okay. Your fallow period is my normal life. And we're both insane. Okay, let's 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 Thank you for pointing that out, by the way. Yeah, let's let's swiftly move on to to one big thing. Okay. Uh I'll go first because I won't take very long. Okay. Uncle Buck. I don't think I've s I did not see this movie in the theaters. Okay. I saw it right when it came out on video. Okay. I don't think I've seen it since. I've seen Whoa. clips of it. Whoa. I know. So, so I'm really glad that you said, I don't know if it's because I grew up on it. I mean, if I had to guess, no. Because, because I did Because I definitively did not grow up on it. Yeah. And it is... I... Why, and I don't necessarily, I mean, I want her to do more now if she wants to, but like, why did we grow up in an America where Amy Madigan wasn't a huge star? <laughs> like. Because she does this weird thing with her mouth. She scowls a lot. Okay. And she's not conventionally gorgeous. I could watch her scowl for days. I'm not saying you're, but you grew up on her. Field of Dreams is like your movie. That's right. She's the greatest film wife of all time, as far as you're concerned. I'm not going to disagree with you, but I don't feel this way about Timothy Busfield. Well, you know what? That's problematic. Maybe you should. No, I'm with you. I, listen, <laughs> listen. I love Amy Madigan. Yeah. I, I, I'm trying to come up with reasons why America's stupid, not why she shouldn't have been fair. famous. No, no. That's fair. That's fair. I just... It is... And, and I mean, I remember... By the way, do you know, do you know who she's married to? I don't. Uh, she's married to Ed Harris, in case you were wondering who has the most intense conversations in America. <laughs> because those two people are so intense. It's true. It's true. And they've been married for 30 years. Yep. Intensity in 10 cities. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> um, and the, and the girl, the, the older daughter is just... So good. I mean... So good, and like so good in a way that it's like she is so infuriatingly teenaged. Yeah, but she, but it's not an annoying performance. Nope. Um, I you are Andy. You are right on. I, I just it, it's it. I don't know that I can call it a perfect movie, but it just like you watch it. I, I watched it, and my heart was full. And and it, it, yeah, John Hughes. This is a John Hughes masterpiece. John yeah. Hughes. Well, it wouldn't even be considered one of his masterpieces, but I love it. And this was the movie. This was the breakout movie for Macaulay Culkin. Right. Uh, this was the movie that led him to get the. I mean, the, you know, because of this, John Hughes wrote Home Alone right. for him. Right. 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 Um, or with him in mind, and and mm -hmm. uh, it's John Candy walking that line that he walks that comic slob line. But, like, he manages to be so human and decent while being 
crappy at the same time. I mean, there's like you believe that he would live be a gambler for a living, but yeah. you also don't believe he'd cheat on his girlfriend. Yes. Do you know what I mean? Like, that's I a do. really that's interesting... really well said. You know, I like, I, 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 there's something about it where, like, you just see him... There's that moment in the movie where he looks at that picture of his brother and his brother's wife, and then he pulls it out of the frame and realizes he's in the picture and has been folded Fold out. Over. yeah. Like, that is one of those things that only John Hughes knows how to do and only John Candy can pull off. I really buy that. believe that. To pull that off and pull off the have a rat and all this thing off your face line, like if you can pull both of those things off in the same movie, yeah. him trying to go to the bathroom in the little kid's toilet at the thing, <laughs> him walking into the, into, the, into the elementary school and realizing he's still smoking a cigarette and should probably – or cigar and should probably put it out. I mean it's just – there's so many things. I, I – he just – you know, it, it, you can you can find a lot of quotes about comedy that aren't funny, as in like like nobody becomes a comic because they had a good childhood, or right, 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 oh, right. Comedy is pain, and I don't know what John Candy's childhood was like, but uh, and I love John Belushi. Yes, and and I think I might have grown to appreciate Chris Farley more than I do. But it is John, but in, in terms of the overweight comedians who died too young it, or comic actors, it is John Candy and it is everybody else. Yep. And yes. it is because when he is smiling, when he is being a slob, when he is being heartwarming, when he is being anything at all, you see, it's, like, it's like a puppy. And I mean that in the best way. You see the pain in his eyes and the... And the and he makes his desire to please like it's always at the forefront. And that's yeah. not to say that he's not a good actor. No, I'm with you. It it I'm with you. I'm with you. I it's it's he's he's just one of those guys. He's like the more you realize, the more you watch his movies growing as a grown up, the more and and the more time goes by, the more you realize he doesn't fit in the like to say like and I we do that. We put him in the category with John Belushi and Chris Farley. Um the things they have in common is that they were fat and that they died young. Yes. You're right. Other than no, that, right. other than that, they don't have anything in common. You're right. You're absolutely right. Like, but I know what you mean. We do do that. Like, yes. I'm with you. I'm no, the same sure. way. Sure. Um, uh, and and uh, it's one of those things, like, where we put them in this category. But the reality is I, I, don't, I don't love John Belushi. Uh, John Belushi's fine. He's sure. amazing. He's a great talent. Right. I never loved him because, to me, he didn't inspire me to fall in love with him. Fair. Okay. And John Candy, like, you just – how do you not love him? If you like, – if you, you watch Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. I was going to say, if you, if you have not seen Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, there is a moment. You will know it when you get there. Yeah. And it is, it's one of those things – it's one of those things like if you aren't unbelievably moved by that moment, I can't say that I won't like you, but I can say with reasonable assurance that I will quickly run out of things to talk about with you. Yeah, you know, we will find very little common ground. Uh, it's uh, yeah, I'll feel like Larry David when he just get writes someone off and he goes, okay, 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 <laughs> like, got it. I know where to put you in my head now. Okay, That's, and, and and not that I'm not incredibly verbose. Everyone listening to this podcast knows that, but uh, the f I, I mean, another the last thing I'll say is this: I was planning on saying maybe three or four sentences about Uncle Buck. About how I didn't. So should we? Should I can skip my one big thing if we want to move on to Melway. How are we doing on time? We can we can go for it or we can move on. I'm I'm either way. Uh, you were really proud of your one big thing. Let's do it. I'm so tired of zombie stuff. Huh. You know how I feel about zombies. Okay. We were just hanging out watching a little show called Breaking Bad. Uh huh. Maybe you've heard of it. I might I might have I might have heard of it. Maybe you've had an aneurysm because of it. Maybe. Anne? Maybe okay. maybe I stroked out twice during that show tonight. Sure, sure. Oh my gosh, Andy. And during it, there's a commercial for a zombie buying a cell phone because Sprint has the best minutes. And it, and my, my brother-in-law was like, oh my gosh, with the zombies. And then I thought about it and I was like, I really like zombies. And then I was like, you know what though? Like... I don't want it to be beaten over the head with a zombie. I don't want every like a zombie like trend because then what happens? 
then all of a sudden right. the zombie thing will become passe. Right. And it shouldn't be passe. It's a cool mythology. Yeah. And by the way, just to show you how messed up this tr it, it being a trend is, does it not? It, does the irony not escape? I guess it escapes the people who made the phone commercial that the zombie is a symbol for mindless consumerism <laughs> and 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 sheep-like behavior or lemming-like behavior, like blindly and mindlessly consuming and following a pack. And that's the person buying the phone is the zombie. Does it not escape you that that's the point of a zombie and you know why it does escape them because all they're thinking is okay here's the deal zombies are really hot right now so let's have right. a zombie that doesn't really want to be called a zombie because it hurts his feelings okay like we need it to have a little zombie moratorium here and that's what i'm saying walking dead needs to end it needs to end it needs to be over soon uh -huh. we need to not have any zombie movies for a while uh -huh. world war z has proven that and we just need to take a break because it's you not because it's not good. Mm -hmm. Ready for it? Because it's too good, and I don't want it to be treated like this. I I this is fascinating to me. I I well for my well okay. My first response is that whatever that unbelievably cynical quote that is totally true. Nobody ever went broke underestimating the intelligence of people. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. right. Um, but uh, I think I might feel the same way about the comic. Walking Dead, and you know that I love the comic. You know that I like it yeah. more than I like the the television show. Yeah. Um. I. I guess, you know, when we do horror school, I've said to you there are going to be some quote unquote important horror movies that you have to watch if you want to be schooled in horror movies. Right. That are not good movies. Sure. And so, I'm not quite like. What's new is not that bad zombie movies like World War Z are coming out. What's new is that is that they are becoming passe because they're in things like phone commercials, right? Right. But right. frankly, I don't watch commercials because my television is on my computer. So, so. But do you know why? But do you know why people? I'm sorry, I interrupted you. Go no, ahead. no. Well, just, just. I, I'm almost done. Just, I like. I don't experience that stuff. Uh. I'm sure it would annoy me to no end if I saw that commercial for the same reasons it annoyed you. But, I mean, like, to, to, to put it in terms of there needs to be fewer of this because it's going to start getting passe or it's the, quality, the overall quality is going to go down. Let's be honest. Zombie movies. I know, I know. But it got really <laughs> you know. exciting there. Like, there was a moment of promise where this could be a genre that was done well. But mm -hmm. it turns out it's just going to be a genre that's done to death. And that's not the same thing. Uh, I, I agree. And, and, and like World War Z was not famous or popular because Brad Pitt was in it. It was famous and popular because it was a zombie deal. The zombies were actually and, – and it was – and they were totally wrong, poorly done. But the idea – I mean it wasn't famous because of Brad Pitt. I find that really interesting. Anyways, okay. Yeah. So that's my one big thing. We'll see what happens. <laughs> um, I'm ready for them to go away for a while so that for, – for their own sake. It's yeah. like vampire. It's like vampires. You know, like you know what you know what's coming that you know what's coming back next, right? Vampires or no werewolves? werewolves? Do you think so? Yeah. That well, John Landis and uh, Elijah Wood are making a werewolf movie. Yeah, but they had Wolfman a few years ago, and it incited exactly no passion out there. So, well, the problem yeah. with that is that it was terrible. I mean, I agree with you, but still. Did you see that? Yes. I'm still trying to get that crap off my shoe. Like it's been <laughs> like three years, four years, and I'm like, get off. I was depressed when I left that movie, <laughs> not because the movie was depressing, like in the sense of like, what have you done to me? But depressed, like I was like, what have uh, you done to me? Done to me? <laughs> Hollywood. Nice. Okay. Nice. That's fair. I, I, you're right. I loved, I loved that one big thing. I, yes, fair. Okay. Before we move on, I want to say one sentence, and we don't have to talk about it. Okay. Watch the Comedy Central roast of James Franco. That's all. It's okay. just uh, throwing it out there. Okay. If you like it, you take it. If you don't, you throw it right back. Nice. Nice. I like it. Okay. Moving on to a little to a little segment Phil and I like to call Project Melway. Yeah, I mean Andy. Uh we, hold on. We got I it's who is it brought to us by? To them by to Second Brief Nation by. Do you are you gonna let me say it? I am, please do. It's brought to you by the Gibsonian Institute. Yep. A shadowy cabal of the world's six most powerful figures 
used to be five. It was the Pentaveret, and they jumped it up to six, and they decided not to rename it. That's their business. <laughs> they have uh, commissioned us to watch the every single Mel Gibson movie in chronological order, and guess what? We bleep and did it. We we bleep and did it. I'm gonna cry right now. I I'm I'm a little emotional. I'm a li- folks. We're gonna we're gonna we're, it's 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 a little dusty. Both in Durham, North Carolina, and in Orange County, California, is a little it's a little my, dusty. I'm not crying. My eyes are sweating. It's yeah. hot. It's, uh... <laughs> folks, uh, I don't I, even know how to say it. Like, I how mean, do you say what's, what's going to be said here? How do you how do you describe a completely inane and futile gesture that we pursued for a year almost? Oh, how man. do you? How I mean, do, I've. I've pursued girls for longer and it didn't pan out. So I mean, really, lesson learned here. I've got something out of this. I we we have got something. What we're trying to say is Andy and I watched Get the Gringo, which is the most recent Mel Gibson movie. And since we were doing this in chronological order, do the math, people. We have finished Project Melway. With, with the exception of... Oh, God. No, 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 no. No, I mean, you're right. No, well, no, well, you, well, I could say two things here, but with the exception of those movies where he had just a cameo performance, that's that not... Th- that you know, don't... I'm not going to watch the entire Father's Day with Billy Crystal and Robin Williams for literally a 30-second moment of Mel Gibson. Right. That's not what we're talking internet, about. Internet, don't turn into the internet here. You do not need to be completely pedantic. Sure. No, but I mean, he wasn't yeah. credited in those. If he's credited, we see it. It's true. It's true. And we are and, done. And we're done. Asterisk. Well, I mean, the man's not dead. He's going to keep making movies. And, in fact... One of them is coming out in three weeks. It's true. It's true. Uh, it is... Uh, Machete it is kills. kills. Machete, Machete kills. kills. Machete kills. And then Expendables 3 is coming out next year. Is that? Is, so, I mean, I figured it would be because it's not like there's a lot of turnaround, a long turnaround time on those. Um, fascinating. It's it's fascinating, and I don't want to talk about it now because I want to see yeah, Expendables two, Andy, and, uh, Expendables three. Expendables and, three is going to take some time because they're waiting to get the uh, the script right. <laughs> okay. I see. I see what you did there. Um, yeah. So I I don't know. I uh, I don't want to talk about it yet, but I, I think I think there's some fascinating things that he's doing with. Playing villains now, um, so so yeah. He so, realized that he was not going to be playing anything, buddy, that anybody ever liked again because people hate his face. So yeah. he's like, I'll just play bad guys. And and it's and it frankly is is I, I mean, concur. I concur. It's a great I, idea. I think I think it's working for him, and and I think the first step in that direction. I think I think get the gringo. I just I just thoroughly enjoyed this movie. I okay. Just, I just thoroughly enjoyed it. It is it is Mel Gibson for the first time in what seems like a really long time, just having fun. Just he he seems he seems like Martin Riggs from the Lethal Weapon movies if things had gone badly for him early in life. And that's interesting. And not only that, this movie gave me what I wanted from the theatrical version of Payback. Interesting. I rooted for the bad guy. Yes. I okay. Okay. That's all I'll say for the moment. Tell me. I I I I well do we want to say what the movie's about? So there's a gringo, it's a white guy, it's Mel Gibson getting stuck uh getting arrested and stuck in a Mexican prison. He stole a bunch of money, like four million dollars. Mm-hmm. And from the Peter come- Stormare, who is He's he's in the movie. He's the guy who seconds, sticks Steve Buscemi in the wood chipper in Fargo. That's all you need to know. It's true. He's other things too, but he'll always be that. But he's that's what he is. And he'll always be the guy who wants Pancakes House. Where's Pancakes House? <laughs> I want pancakes. <laughs> um, uh, uh, and anyways, the, he, he's in a Mexican prison. He befriends a child in the Mexican prison. I don't even know how to describe this. I shouldn't have even started. If you want to try. <laughs> Please try. He's, it's, it's, you know, it's a convoluted plot. The plot is needlessly convoluted, but that's part of the fun, at least in my mind. Yeah. Uh, It's, the story sounds totally lame because it depends entirely on the personalities carrying out, carrying it out. This guy who is a bad guy, 
yeah. gets into yeah. this prison yeah. where he is surrounded by even worse people and he befriends a kid because families live in this prison because because movies. Yeah. And and he befriends a kid who who is like what is he? 10, 12, 10? He's 10. He's 10 and and his fir- the first thing he does is like can I have a cigarette? And like and and he befriends him and the kid like the kid and his mother like to whatever extent is necessary redeems him at least to the point where he well, I did to some point. He's certainly not a good guy at the end of the movie. To a point. To this a is point. the thing. There's never like a point where I, I didn't. I mean, I rooted for him only because he was Mel Gibson on the screen, and a bunch of other people were bad, worse than him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's nothing about his character that I actually care about. I didn't care about his character. I didn't actually care if his character lived or died. To be honest with you, that's fair. neither did I. Didn't care for a second. I cared That's about right. the little kid. Right. Listen, yes. you want me to care about someone's mission? Make part of his mission saving a little child's life. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it wasn't a bad movie. Right. That's almost all I can say. Oh. I didn't hate it. I didn't hate it. I didn't dislike it. I just found myself being like, I really want, if Mel Gibson's career is going to get back on track, or even if it's not, I want him to be making better movies. Or as the guidance counselor at my whole high school said, make good choices. Yeah, I don't I don't want to give the impression that I think this is a good movie. It's not a good movie. Okay, but you thoroughly enjoyed it. Yes, because okay. it's because because you know, it's it'll, pulp. It'll it's, Yes. It's pulp. It's trashy. It it's it's I don't watch soap operas. These are my stories. These you are my I mean? stories. I'm you know? watching my stories. Yeah. So, so yeah. Um, but I don't know why when I watch that movie, I almost feel like it would have been a thousand times more interesting if it wasn't a white guy in the prison. If it was actually a story about all Mexicans in a Mexican prison. There is literally nothing that happens to <laughs> Mel Gibson's character mm-hmm. that has anything to, to do with the fact that he is, in fact, a gringo. And in fact, there are things that he does in that movie where he, like, basically gets, like, goes about unnoticed by people when he is the only white guy in the whole area <laughs> and the only one who somehow manages to look vaguely clean and not gross. Sure. And yet he, like, slips in and out of scenarios unnoticed. And I'm like, okay, so first of all, nope. You're the only white guy. Someone's going <laughs> to shiv you by now or at least ask you anything about yourself, only white guy. <laughs> Secondly, the movie's called Get the Gringo. And yet, the fact that he's white doesn't effing matter to the plot. But they do the say several times, get the gringo. Bring the gringo to me. Fine. I will. Andy, I grant you that. I, I'm not. This, I need you to understand, I really need you to understand, what I just said is in no way to disagree with the overarching point you are making. <laughs> right, right. It, it, is, it, is, it is one of those things where I'm like, okay, well, if that's... It wasn't bad. It, it wasn't a bad movie. I just didn't care. Yeah, I just fair. The whole time I was like, okay. I mean, they did some cool things. The kid was cool. The kid was a really did a good yeah, job. Yeah, His mom was not difficult to look at right as a person yes um and she was the only gorgeous woman and mel gibson was mel gibson and there was a 10 year old boy so gee i wonder if they're gonna end up together spoiler they do <laughs> there could be a director's out cut out there where he dies it wouldn't matter at all <laughs> sure but it was i just i just see here's the deal the beaver was not a disaster, but <laughs> <laughs> the Beaver was a was it was a bleep show. It was a it was an S H blank blank show, but it was an S yes. H blank blank show that was all. I, it's so sad, by the way, that my vocabulary has diminished to the point that I can't think of a good alternative to just saying S H blank blank show. Um, there's got to be a term. A bit of a mess. It was, it was a, a bit of a mess. It was a bit of a it mess. Was, 
It was, oh, that's perfect. I, I once described someone, uh, I have a, a teacher from seminary, and I described to her, she's like old school, and I described to her this term, SH blank blank show, and she's like, what did you say? And I'm like, well, let me explain to you what it means. And I told her, she goes, oh, we just call that a hot mess. And, and, and <laughs> the, so that, so this, thank you, thank you, doctor. Um, it is a hot mess. The beaver is a hot mess. <laughs> It's true. But it's a hot mess that you feel is really trying to do something. Yes. And get the gringo, and this is fine. I'm not, it's not get the gringo's fault. All get the gringo's trying to do is be fun and pulpy. Yes. But I, it's like part of me wants Mel Gibson, and maybe that's what he's destined to do, and that's fine. Machete Kills and Expendables 3 tell me maybe that is what he's trying to do from now on. <laughs> Yeah, and actually, whenever Mel Gibson tried to make serious movies, they weren't actually my favorite movies of his. That's true. So I guess I don't know. I I don't know what I'm saying here. This isn't cohesive. This isn't coherent. It's sort of like the master. That's right. That's right. Um, really, really, really articulate and not actually about anything. Um, <laughs> I I don't I I just if this is where Mel Gibson's career is going, I wonder what it means. Yeah, I wanted I wanted it to be more inventive. I don't know why. I I don't know why I deserve that. Um, he does. He makes very conventional movies quite often. Mm-hmm. You know, so he. I mean, that's so. I don't know. But I did feel like this was. Had it not been Mel Gibson, this would have just been a B movie. I think it's. I think it's still a B movie. Frankly. I think I'm saying yes, but I think I'm saying the only thing that made me see it was that Mel Gibson was in it. Oh, sure. I, I think I think that's and that we forced ourselves true. to see every single movie he ever made. You're you're right. I I mean, we're done though. Lachaim. Uh, 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 to life. I don't even know what that means anymore. I don't. I don't <laughs> what, what I don't know what my life means without a Mel Gibson movie to watch for next week. Um, I guess we're gonna take a break. We're gonna breathe. Yeah, yeah. I think I think I, I, folks. And by folks, I mean Second Breakfast Station, and I also mean you, Phil. Thank you. I, I feel like I feel like I can't even talk about it because I, I need like I need like a week to process the enormity of it. Yeah. Um and yeah, we can take a week off. I, I we're gonna do Melway Awards. I think we should wait a week. Let's take a whole week. I yeah. think we should just take a break. Yes. I think so, we should let Mel Gibson soak in. Yes. So folks, so folks, uh Melway Awards. We, we've started getting a couple. We're gonna we're gonna do Melway Awards, and it's gonna be like you know our favorite movie, our least favorite movie, our you know most beautiful co-star stuff like that. We've come up with some categories. We want you to help us come up with more categories. Okay, what come up with superlatives for Mel Gibson movies and send yep. them to Second Breakfast Podcast at gmail dot com. Uh, we uh, we Love will. It. We will, uh, let's be honest, the bar is not high. It's going to be a Gibbs stravaganza. Well done. A Gibbs explosion. It gives, I almost thought it was going to be Mel Splosive, but I like Gibbs. <laughs> folks, <laughs> folks, we are, we are, I want you to know we are filling this very late at night, but that is not why we are punchy. This is not, man, it's late at mostly, night. Mostly, mostly it's just. It's like it's Mel Gibson punchiness. Yeah, I, I've said this before, but what is that? I, I forget the exact verbiage that that Frodo says on on the shore of on the shore on the on the slope of Mount Doom, where he's like, I've I, I, I've I, forgotten the taste, taste of, of strawberries, strawberries and or, I've forgotten the smell of, of the smell of water and the taste of strawberries. I, it's all Mel Gibson all it's the all, time. Yeah, I just seriously, I don't I, even. I, I see. I, I yeah. He I sees see it. when I'm sleeping. He knows when I'm awake. <laughs> it's not. It's not good for me. It's not good. I and the worst part is, I feel like you feel like what you just said about like not knowing what to do. Like, I miss him already. <laughs> it's, it, it, strangely, that's. I, mean, I that's true. am. I you know. And what's really funny in all this is we undertook the project Melway. There was a jokingness to it. Like yeah. this, like guy who'd car- whose career had become a joke, who had flamed out. Yeah. And now I love Mel Gibson. I I, I mean, <laughs> like I do too. just straight unabashedly love his work, and 
not don't love all his movies. And and actually, yeah. I really wonder how we're what who we're going to if if we're going to do this again, how we will do it again. Yep. And for whom we will do it because I wonder if we were just destined to love it because we already liked some of his stuff. Right. Or if it really did have, or I wonder what the effect of seeing a person's entire chron- uh, filmography is. Like, yeah, we don't have it. You know, like that's, I don't have a control. I don't have a control subject. Right. Well, actually, folks, that's something else you can send to Second Breakfast Podcast at gmail dot com. Thank uh, you. We're Call. you know in 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 the not too terribly distant future, we're we're looking for maybe our next subject, and and we will listen to all uh, all submissions, but. But I, I think we'd like to do not another actor. So maybe an actress, maybe a director. You know, I who knows? Maybe a screenwriter. Be be creative. But but um, I, it would have to be someone really special for shall we say for us to pick another white dude who stands in front of a camera. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Um. But uh, but yeah. I, I mean, I, I'm kind of. I mean, I'm certainly done talking about Get the Gringo. Uh, and when does Machete Kills come come out? It's in October. I don't. October. Oh, I thought it was September. Is it? Is it really October? I don't actually know. Well, I'm looking it up while you talk. October. Yeah. So, so we got a ways. We got a we got we got a few weeks. In those weeks, yeah. Phil and I will take a well deserved melcation. And oh, nice. <laughs> um, and uh, and then we will come back with the the um. Melcademy Awards. Wow. And that's the last one I'm going to do. We're not going to do the Golden Gibbs? <laughs> You're welcome. Well done. Well done. I, I, can't, I can't top that. So I, I say, I say we, we get out now. So, a good day to you all. <laughs> Folks, this has been a, a, a monumental, a momentous Second Breakfast podcast. Uh, and not just because I think it might be three and a half hours long. Yeah. But... Um, but uh, we hope you've enjoyed it. We hope you've enjoyed Project Melway. Yeah. Like, like we have. And, uh, and that'll do it for this installment of, pro- of, of both Project Melway and Second Breakfast. I'm Andy Roth, and that's Phil Duvall. We'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody.